Hello, hello everybody. Still in the Valley of Fire. Got up really early this morning to catch the first light and uh, well, I really screwed this one up. The light was absolutely fantastic, uh, but I didn't really know where to go. <laughs> so I had uh, Nick drop, uh, drop me off with uh, uh, Thomas Heaton and Greg Snell and we've been running around trying to find compositions, but it's really difficult here. I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous with all the different colors, uh, but um, yeah, I had a, a lot of trouble. And of course, when I did finally find something, the, the clouds moved in, but the light is starting to get quite good again. It's not as good as it was earlier, but I think I found a composition over here. So I'll just uh, run you over here so you can see what I'm, I'm photographing here. I've climbed up one of these rock spires and I found a little archway and then there's a prominent uh, spire in the background and then a big boulder here. So the light keeps coming in and out and hopefully we'll get a little bit of warm light before it goes behind some more clouds here. So I'm gonna take some photographs first to make sure I get those and then I'll run you through the composition. I'd also like to show you uh, some different methods that you can use a, a, a lens to draw emphasis onto uh, a dominant subject. So in this case, you know, we have this spire in the background and I'm using a wide angle lens. So the emphasis is more on the foreground, but if I want to emphasize the, uh, the spire in the background, then I'd probably back up a little bit and use a slightly longer focal length to bring that, uh, that whole spire forward a bit so it's more dominant in the frame. And I'll show you exactly how to do that right now. All right, hopefully you can uh, see this uh, composition on the back of my camera. So what I've done here is I've tried to really emphasize the, uh, the foreground here, and that's with a, uh, a 16 millimeter. And you'll notice that the foreground is, is really quite large in the frame, and the pinnacle in the background is very small. So it's, it's not a, a dominant feature in, in the whole photograph. So whenever you want to emphasize a foreground, you can do, do that by just putting on a wide angle lens and getting in really close to that foreground to, uh, to just make it look larger in the frame. And then anything in the background, mountains or anything like that will look quite small in the frame. Now, if I switch to a 35 millimeter, notice what happens to the pinnacle in the background. Okay, now, as you can see, I've switched to 35 millimeter and I've tried to compose the image more or less the same as uh, the 16 millimeter version but you'll notice straight away that there's much more emphasis on the pinnacle in the background. And that's because we've zoomed in. So all I've done is I've just moved back a little bit, zoomed in, and uh, it's put more emphasis on, uh, on the pinnacle in the background. So think about that when you're using a wide angle lens or any kind of lens, you know, what is it in your frame that you really want to emphasize? Is it the foreground or the background or a combination of the two? And I've said this before, the problem with wide angles is that uh, as soon as you, you know, have it at its widest settings, say 16 millimeter or wider, uh, and emphasize that foreground, anything in the background ends up being really small in the, in the background. So just keep that in mind because you might have a, a great foreground and these beautiful mountains or, or whatever in the, in the background, but as soon as you put that wide angle lens on, uh, you just can't see those mountains anymore. So in a case like that, there's a, a couple of things you can do. You can either put a slightly longer lens on or, or zoom uh, in a little bit just to emphasize the background. Or some photographers are actually uh, blending uh, different focal lengths in, in Photoshop. I don't tend to do that. Uh, it's not really my shtick, but uh, I can see the advantages of doing that. And what that would include would be uh, taking a photograph with a wide angle lens of say some flowers or a dominant rock in the foreground and then putting on a longer focal length and taking a photograph of the background and then combining those two images in uh, some kind of software like Photoshop.
Anyway, I just thought I'd show you that. As far as these compositions go, I think I prefer the wider version. Uh, and what I've tried to do, uh, I really wanted to show off some of these textures in the side of the rock here. And I also wanted to show the, the hole in the rock here. So what I had to do for that was uh, just move my camera down slightly so that I was including sky and not uh, hillside in the background. Otherwise, the hillside would kind of block that, that viewpoint through that hole there. Right, I think I found another composition. Now on a normal day, if the skies were blue uh, without any clouds, I think the light would be a bit harsh, but there is uh, a, little bit of, a little bit of light coming through. So it's quite nice right now. Uh, not as dramatic as morning light, but uh, I think I found a composition. There's a couple of little alcoves here. And uh, what I like about them in, in one of them, the, the bigger one, there's this little shrub growing in it. So it looks very stark. So. I've kind of wandered around trying to find a good composition and I think from the side here it looks really good because it has a little bit of a pinnacle separating the two alcoves and there's a little bit of side lighting coming in here and it has a bit of a glow to it. And then in the background, uh, the background I'm not going to emphasize too much but there's some beautiful colors in there. There's uh, like yellows and pinks and reds and uh, yeah, it's really quite lovely. So uh, I'll just take this shot really quickly. Tom and Greg have uh, gone back to the car, so I'm, I'm thinking that they're pretty much done for the morning. So I'm gonna take the shot really quickly and uh, I'll try to go over my composition and then I'm gonna head back for some breakfast. Okay, hopefully you guys can see this. You can see the two little alcoves, one's bigger than the other. That's the main subject with the little shrub here. And then we have the other little alcove here and I've cut it off a little bit because I don't think I need the whole thing, but you can see some glowing light in the background. And if you've watched my other videos, I talk about uh, contrast and putting uh, you know, lights and darks together. And I think this works really well because we have a bit of dark separating the light in the background of this alcove. And then this one is quite dark inside, but it's light on the outside. And then we have the little shrub here. The background isn't terribly important, but I've tried to uh, compose it so that there isn't anything too distracting in there. I might have to burn it in a little bit. But yeah, it's a simple composition. I think it works really well. And uh, once I've processed this, I don't think it'll take too much. Uh, a little bit dodging, burning, the usual. Right, I guess I better head back. That's the only thing when you come with a group of people, you, you kind of feel pressured to uh, you know, get back because everybody's waiting on you. Anyway, off we go. Smaller gimbal though, it's a lot better, wouldn't the, it? Uh, the first yoga oh, I think it's about an auto ISO, so it's a little overexposed. It looks good though. Usually they'll, they'll start in like. Uh, I like that you can see it's focusing on your eye. Yeah. 
Oh, it's got face detect. Yeah. Oh, I only get one of them and my Fuji. Ditch my camera. They probably come down in price. What's that, like $800? $1,000? No, it's like $1,200. Really? No, dollars. Canadian. Oh, what's that? About like 800 quid? Yeah. I have the old one. Oh, wow. Holding that yeah, for 10 seconds. Can you do a downward dog? No, it's too Give me the. Gavin. Downward dog. Do it. Downward dog is this one, isn't it? Just pass down with the door, then we do this this thing where we kind of like plank for a bit. Then <laughs> up. Kind of Don't you need more thrust? You want more thrust? Yeah, more thrust. <laughs> 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 Thread the needle. Yes. Thread the needle. <laughs> <laughs> everybody last morning out at uh, the valley of fire I have to admit getting up early is not my forte <laughs> but uh, I'll do it when I have to I'm up here with uh, Gavin Gavin's uh, he's just set up down at an arch down here and about I don't know 30 40 feet just beyond him is a big horn sheep just standing majestically on the edge of a rock it's uh, actually it'd make a neat shot with uh, with Gavin sitting there and then the the bighorn sheep just beyond him. I think it's on the lookout for predators. Yeah, that's really neat. Uh, so we've climbed up on top of this big bluff, and uh, I'll just show you what I'm I'm photographing this morning. Got all these red rocks in the foreground, and then there's uh, the green hills in the background. The sun hasn't quite come up yet. There are a few wispy clouds uh, that have gone a little bit pink, but uh, other than those, it's pretty much a, a bluebird sunny day. So the light is not gonna last very long. And actually the light is probably best right now. And just as the sun comes over the mountains in the, in the, uh, in the east here. So I'm gonna get all set up, take some shots here. And then I'm going to run down to the arch where Gavin is. And uh, there's a few more arches down there that I, I think I might photograph. But it's, uh, yeah, I'm probably not going to get a lot of uh, photography in with the, with the skies the way they are. But we'll see. I mean, I'm just looking over here and it looks like there might be some wispy clouds. It's kind of hard to see them this morning. everybody thanks ever so much for watching this week's video be sure to give me a thumbs up if you did enjoy the video uh, just as a side note if you are interested in going uh, to photograph in the valley of fire 
I would highly recommend that you camp in the area. And the reason why I say that is because the, the park closes at uh, sunset and doesn't reopen until after sunrise. So if you want to catch that beautiful light, then you, you're out of luck because you won't get in the park quick enough. So there are a couple of campsites there. I would highly recommend that you do that if you can. As far as my own photography in the area, I don't really think I did the area justice, so I'm really looking forward to uh, returning one day. All right, until next week, thanks ever so much. Bye for now.